Good morning. We are delighted that you've joined us this morning for worship. I know it was one of those mornings where it was tempting to stay home and am I right? <laughs> but uh, we are delighted that you're here and those that are joining us online. Pray that this morning's experience of worship would be one filled with joy, peace, and grace. I want to encourage members, friends, and visitors to please sign the friendship pass as they are passed along on the pews from one person to another, and we encourage you to stay for conversation and coffee after worship in Moss Hall. May our hearts be opened and may our hands be lifted and our hearts Praise the name of God who has been good to us and is here with us. Let us worship the Lord together. Able for the call to worship. God meet us in our greatest need and satisfies us with divine presence and provision. In gratitude, let us worship the Lord our God.
and meets our needs using the words printed in your bulletin. God of compassion, we are sick. We have wrestled all night with worry instead of resting in you. We have asserted our own goodness instead of wakening to yours. We have turned away those hungry for your help instead of trusting you and feeding them from your limitless supply of blessings. Forgive us, heal us, and help us to hold on to you. We call upon you, for you will answer us, O oh God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The God of fast love is our refuge and savior. In Christ, we are who are broken, are healed, forgiven, transformed, amen. Now, with thanksgiving in your hearts for the forgiveness that Christ won for us through the death on the cross, please pass the peace to your neighbor saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Children, come and join me on the steps this morning. It's okay. I love that we have friends and family visiting. Tis that time of year, right? So it is also a special time of year in the church. It is a time of year that includes the color purple. Now, do you see, if you take a look around, maybe behind you, do you see some purple? Yeah, yeah. That's right, we've changed the pyramid again to be purple. Good job, Henry, up on the big cross, we have purple. And then yes, this beautiful tapestry on the front of our worship table, which, and I am wearing purple. I kind of did that on purpose. Next week, we are going to learn more about that tapestry. But I wanted to first tell you, did you have something to say, Quinn? What? All right, so Quinn can just taught us our whole lesson. It is the season of Lent, which is the season, le the season leading up to Easter. Easter. So this time that leading up to Easter is 40 days. It starts with Ash Wednesday. And on Ash Wednesday, we had two of our choir members describe it beautifully about that it is a time of repentance. Now... Do you guys know what it means to repent? What do you think? Have you ever heard that word? So the idea of repentance is to say, I'm sorry. Have you guys ever had to say, I'm sorry? Yeah. Every one of us, right? How many of you have had to say, I'm sorry? All of them. Maybe even today, I might have already needed to say, I'm sorry. But it's not just about saying, I'm sorry. It's about then changing our ways. A couple weeks ago, I had everybody stand up and face one direction. 
and then talk about how when you turned around, we were leaving the mistakes we made behind. We were turning away from those and looking forward. Well, when we repent, when we go to God and we say we are sorry, that's what we're supposed to do is say we're sorry and leave it behind and focus on the future to change our ways. But it's also a time of renewal, of being renewed in our relationship with Jesus. It's a time for us to focus on growing closer to him. How could you grow closer to God or to Jesus? What's something you might do? Yeah, Quinn. Right, so we could focus on helping others. Yes. Caring for each other. Yes, what else? Oh, it could be that we are planting and growing things. Yeah, what else? Praying and having a conversation with Jesus. Yes. Yeah, coming to church and making sure that that is a focus. Yes. Yeah, praying and being in conversation with God. So I'm carrying this little calendar here, and some of you have already made handprint placemats in your Sunday school room, and now this calendar is on there. And on that are 40 things that you can be doing focusing you on Jesus, praying, helping others, sharing that smile that God gave to you. So as we continue through this season of Lent, let's remember to think about how we can focus on being the best person that God wants us to be, saying we're sorry for our mistakes and focusing on the future. Shall we pray? Gracious and holy Lord, we thank you. We thank you that when we say we are sorry, you forgive us, that we do not have to look back, we do not have to carry our mistakes, but that you are willing to go to the cross for us that we could look forward and focus on being the best person that you have created us to be. As we go through this season of Lent, help us to remember to focus on you and all that we do. Amen. All right. Some of us will head to Sunday school and some of you will stay to usher. Let us turn to God in prayer as we lift up those near and far from us who are not well, the church and the world as well. God, who hears us and holds us and helps us, you are our eternal source of blessing. You are our endless source of vision and your compassion. You see our need. You heal our sickness and satisfy our hunger. Hear us as we pray for the church, as we pray for the world, as we pray for all in need. O oh Lord, attend to our cry and give ear to our prayers. For our sisters and brothers called by your name throughout the world. For our brothers and sisters and friends in, in the midst of our church, Lord, who are in need of comfort and strength and healing, we pray for them. For those who are recovering, Lord, for those who are battling and uh, struggling with some anxiety or issues or confusion. Lord, we just pray that you will be present in their life and surround them with your love and with people who can care and support them, Lord. Lord, hear our prayers as we ask that you bless our congregation and you help us to move forward in mission with you. That you continue, Lord, to guide and lead our elders and Lord, use our deacons as they care for the well-being of our congregation. We thank you for all the volunteers and the different ministries and for the staff that works diligently, Lord, to carry out their calling and their duties to help this congregation, help us move towards you, Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers, and we pray for the healing and preservation of creation in heaven and on earth, and it is a gift unto us. Lord, we pray for the need of the nations, praying that you give wisdom for leaders to the leaders and vindication and relief for the oppressed. We pray that the leaders around the world and our country will be guided, Lord, by the good will to lead and, and care for their citizens and to find peace among ourselves and, Lord, to make our world a better place, not just for today, but for the days to come and for the future generation. Lord, we lift up those who are hungry, ill, vulnerable, or seeking refuge, Lord, from adversaries and injustice. I pray that you be with them. I pray that you care for them. I pray that your compassion will fall upon them, Lord, as they need your care. And Lord, use us to be instruments of justice, of love, and mercy. Oh God, hear our prayer for all who need you near and far as we pray quietly in our hearts for friends and loved ones and for ourselves at this moment. Lord, hear our prayers and, and have mercy upon all of us and be with us and be with those we have lifted up in this morning into your presence. Give ear to our prayer for the faithful who have preceded us and in whose steps we follow, for those who have served this congregation and now, Lord, are not able or shut in, Lord, our, I pray for them as well. We thank you for those who've come before us and led us to this place. Lord, we pray that you will continue to show us your wonderful and gracious love and mercy every single day, and that we may behold your face in righteousness and be satisfied when we awake beholding your likeness through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Gracious Lord, we thank you for the blessings that come to us and the opportunity to be a blessing to others. Thank you for this privilege and honor to be able to serve you through our giving, Lord, giving of those resources you've put in our hands and we give them to you and placing them back, small portion of all that you've given us. We pray that you will multiply it, Lord, and that we'll be able to use it with compassion and grace to lead this congregation and being a beacon of light in this community. Lord, increase our giving of time and talent and treasure, and let us be the conduits of blessing to others and wherever we go and within this community of faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Farmer, Farmer Jones lived in the countryside alone except for his dog. His pet died and Farmer Jones went to his pastor saying, Pastor, my dog has passed away. He meant everything for, to me. Could you possibly do a service for this poor creature? The pastor told the farmer, no, we cannot have service for an animal in the church but I'll tell you what, there's a new church down the road, denominational church that opened up. No telling what they believe in, but maybe they'll do something for the animal. Farmer Jones said, I'll go right away. By the way, do you think $20,000 is good enough for the service? <laughs> the pastor replied, why didn't you tell me he was Presbyterian? We can change quickly. <laughs> we continue with this 
overarching theme, the power of new. And, and I want to just share with you uh, some thoughts that will get back to the book of Genesis, chapter 32, when Jacob wrestles with, with a man, an angel, not sure, but definitely the presence of God. But I want to begin talking to you about when I was growing up as a child, as a youth, I enjoy watching the professional wrestlers participate in hand-to-hand -hand struggle, but for the purpose of entertaining. This is not the formal high school wrestling and college that we see, but it was more for entertaining. And boys being boys, my friend and I would get into a wrestling match imitating our favorite wrestlers. And I'm going back to the late 60s, early 70s, Bruno Sammentino, Pedro Morales, Lou Albano, <laughs> Freddie Blassie, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the problem was that as kids, we were not acting out like the professionals did, so we often got hurt. But even worse, the wrestling match that were for fun turned into real fights among the boys. But as I got older, I discovered a different type of wrestling match. A wrestling match that takes place deep, deep in the soul among all humans. Deep in the heart and the mind. We wrestle, we struggle with the past, we struggle with fear, we struggle with failure. We struggle with people, we struggle with ourselves, we wrestle with ourselves, and we even struggle and wrestle with God. It is in the book of Genesis that we find this man named Jacob who wrestles, has a wrestling match with an unknown man who he will discover that is really God in some human form trying to speak and relate and deal with him. That wrestling match changes the trajectory of Jacob and look, continues to move the people of God towards the promised land. So that's, I want to talk about surrendering for the win. We win, we often don't surrender, but when we wrestle with God and sometimes when we wrestle with ourselves, it requires us to surrender in order for it to be a win-win for all of us. Our sermon text is Genesis 32, verse 22 to 31. That same night, Jacob got up, took his two wives, his two concubines and his 11 children and crossed the Jabbok river. After he sent them across, he also sent across all that he owned, but he stayed behind alone. Then a man came and wrestled with him until, with him until just before daybreak. When the man saw that he was not winning the struggle, he hit Jacob on the hip and it was thrown out of the joint, out of the socket. The man said, let me go, daylight is coming. I won't, unless you bless me, Jacob answered. I won't let you go until you bless me. What is your name, the man asked. Jacob, he answered. The man said, your name will no longer be Jacob. You have struggled with God, with man, and you have won, so your name will be Israel. We come to know the Israelites later on in Scripture. Early on, a name is given to Jacob to be called Israel. And Jacob said, now tell me your name. But he answered, why do you want to know my name? And then he blessed Jacob. Jacob said, I've seen God face to face, and I'm still alive. So he named the place Peniel. The sun rose as Jacob was leaving Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip, surrendering for the wind. Jacob is one of the twin boys of Isaac and Rebekah. Jacob's name means heel catcher and carries the meaning of one that ceased to deceive. He is known as a trickster in Genesis. When Esau, his twin brother, came home tired and hungry after being out and hunting, 
He saw that Jacob was cooking a, a wonderful stew and he could smell it and he could breathe it in and he was hungry and he asked Jacob for some stew. And Jacob said, I'll give it to you on the one condition. You give me the birthrights uh, as the older child and I give you what I've cooked. And surely enough, Jacob got what he wanted and Esau, he was foolish, he gave it away. When Isaac, his father, is an older man and blind, Jacob, with the help of his mother, deceives the old man pretending to be his brother Esau. He dresses up in Esau's clothing. His mother does the cooking for him because she knows what Isaac wants at this moment in time. And, he, and Jacob goes in, and the old man cannot see him see correctly, sees blind. And he touches him and they put him in such a way that he smells and feels like his brother Jacob, like his brother Isaac, uh, Esau. You do these names too often, they're going to confuse you. <laughs> Esau. And he gives Jacob the blessing. And the blessing is not just God bless you, but it's a blessing that conveys the vitality and the energy of the soul to one who is being blessed. It's a blessing that when given to the elder son, you cannot take it away. And as Jacob receives the blessing, Esau is left behind with nothing. And when he learns that Jacob has done this deception and has taken away his blessing, Bible says that he hated his brother and began to plan to kill him. When Rebecca, the mother of these twin boys, heard what Esau was saying, she sent Jacob to live with his, her brother named Laban in Haran. So Laban, Jacob goes to work for this man, his uncle, and his uncle deceives Jacob as well. This is an interesting story. He changes the wages every time he's ready to pay the, the Jacob, he changes him. And instead of getting $5, he's getting four. And the next time he's supposed to get four, he gets three, and it goes on and on. And when Jacob falls in love with Rachel, he makes an agreement that he will work for seven years so he can marry Rachel. And his father-in-law, future father-in-law, agrees Laban says, yes, seven years of work, and I'll give you Rachel. And the night of the wedding, when Jacob goes in into the tent, guess what? It's not Rachel. It's Leah, the older sister. How are you doing? So he works another seven years, another seven years for the woman he loves, Rachel. And by the time we get to this chapter 32, uh, Jacob is a very successful man. And as he gets ready to leave the land behind Haran and go back to the land that God has promised to Father Abraham and Isaac and now to him, he leaves with his wives, he lives with his concubines, he leaves with his servants, he leaves with 11 children, he leaves with a whole flock of animals. He is a rich man on his way back home except he's got one major problem. The conflict has not been resolved with his brother. His brother Esau, the last time he saw him, was ready to kill him and for doing that trick to him, to his dad, tricking his dad. Jacob is on his way with all his family and the animals and servants. And just before he gets there, He's told by one of his servants that Esau is coming down to meet him. But he has 400 men on his side. So here we are. Jacob reaches the river, and he sends his servants and his family to cross ahead of him. And now he is alone at night. He's a man that has deceived He's a man that has taken a birthright and the blessing from his brother. 
He's a man who also has deceived, has been deceived by his father-in-law. He's a man that has fled his father-in-law's land without saying much to him. And there's more that goes on. And now he's alone by himself. He's vulnerable. He has a lot to think about. Will Esau, his brother, take revenge? The last thing you want is someone you have created rage against you to be chasing you. Angry people do some crazy things, and he's wondering, what will my brother do? Have you ever been, find yourself that at night often is the, the toughest hours that we have when we're struggling and wrestling with issues? Jacob was having a hard time sleeping probably and is restless, has so many thoughts on his mind. Have you ever been in that situation where you're struggling and wrestling maybe with yourself, wrestling with an issue, a decision you have to make and you have to do something and your mind and your body and your spirit is restless and cannot come to that place of calmness and rest. The weight of the matter presses on us. The psalmist says, writes, I am worn out from sobbing. O night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with my tears. There are moments in life where you come to that place where night is upon you and the soul is as dark as the night. And it is in that spirit of the night that a man appears out of nowhere and surprises Jacob and attacks him. And Jacob and him begin to wrestle into the dawn. It's not a dream. Scripture doesn't say it's a dream. It's not a nightmare. It doesn't speak about a nightmare. Jacob is fully awake he is engaged in a wrestling match with what appears to be at first a man, but he'll discover later on that is God wrestling with Jacob, wrestling with him as he wrestles with himself and God. The prophet Hosea in chapter 12, verses 3 to 4, speaks that this man, as he writes, was an angel, but we don't know if it was an angel, a man, Scripture doesn't give us all of that, gives us some hints, but there we know that he is wrestling. And the man is not winning. The man, the assailant, is losing his battle. And when he sees that he's losing his battle and he's not winning and daybreak is upon them, he does what a good wrestler will do. He finds a place where it hurts most, and he took him by his hip and hit him. Jacob pulls it out of his socket, out of his joint. And if you ever had hip problems or any kind of problems in the body, that severe pain is pain. But Jacob is not willing to let go, although he's crippled by the blow. The man is asking him, let me go, let me go before dawn break. And part of it is that no one, anyone that sees God will not survive. That's part of what's going on here. The man wants to break away. But Jacob decides that he would not let him go. He's going to wrestle and wrestle for the blessing. And at this moment, when he realizes that Jacob is not letting go and he's asking for the blessing, he asked Jacob, what's your name? Who are you, Jacob? What do they call you, Jacob? What's your identity, Jacob? How do others know you, Jacob? And he says, well, what's your name? And he says, my name is Jacob. Jacob the trister, the one who has deceived, the one who has been conniving all his life at times, the one who has this been dishonest, but at the same time, his dishonesty has got him what he wants. So far, 
And at that moment, a man says, your name will be changed to Israel. And Israel means God rules or God struggles. That's what it means in Hebrew. God rules or God struggles. Jacob has been strong against God and he has prevailed at least on the surface and he will prevail against man and his name will change and that name will become the name of the Israelites. The people of God will be the people of Israel. Then Jacob, being who Jacob is, decides he wants to know what's the name of this man he's wrestling with. But the man does not unveil his name or give it away. Instead, he gives him a blessing. He blesses Jacob. And he blesses Jacob with a blessing that will be with him as he goes on and moves forward. He blesses Jacob to be able to fulfill the promise that came to Father Abraham and Isaac that they will have the land of Canaan and that God would multiply their descendants beyond anything they have seen, more than the stars, more than the sands. He is blessed, and for the first time, Jacob has been blessed without having to deceive anyone, without having to disguise himself to get the blessing of his dad, without having to trick someone to be able to get the birthright. He's been blessed because God has blessed him at this moment of struggle, at this moment of wrestling, at this moment that he faces himself and faces God. God blesses him. He surrenders the old way of doing business and surrenders himself to God. When he says, I will not let you go until you give me the blessing. I'm going to surrender when you give me the blessing. I'm going to surrender to you as I struggle, as I face my pain. I'm here doing it in a different kind of way. And you know what's fascinating about the story is that As the sun is rising, Jacob will leave limping. He will have a scar for the rest of his life. Every time he'll take a step, he'll remember of that moment and encounter with God. If you have a, is there a scar or a bruise in your life that every time you think of it, You remember that moment. For Jacob is going to be limping. Every time he steps, I imagine when he got back to the camp with his family, Rachel must have said to him, what happened to you? Why are you walking that way? The man who struggles with God is mocked by God, not in a negative way, but in a way so he remembers that God met him in the place of, alone in the camp at night and revealed his presence to him and he struggled with God and God struggled with him because God was seeking to shape and sharpen him for what was to come, including his encounter with Esau that would take place at the end of the night. And Jacob comes to that place where he realizes, I have been fighting with God. He names that place Pianel because it is the place that he came face to face with God. And yet God spared me. God was gracious. God was kind. God was merciful. So here's my question to you. Have you ever wrestled with God? about what he wants, hopes, and expects from you. How he wants you to run business, how he wants you to live, how he wants you to love, how he wants you to forgive, how he wants you to act, how he wants you to serve. Have you wrestled with God? Maybe you haven't wrestled with God, but I've wrestled with God. (laughs) 
I've had those battles. God, why are you sending me to this place? Or why are you taking me here? Why are you asking me to preach this? Why, Lord, are you asking me to hang on in the midst of the trials and tribulations, O Lord? Why, God, having planned to be with my mother two weeks, just two weeks, I needed two weeks to get there for Thanksgiving so I could be with her and surprise her for her birthday. And she gets ill two weeks before and passes away. Have you ever wrestled with God? Have you wrestled with God about a loss of a child or a child that does not, has not met your expectations? Now we can go deep into that. But we all have. Have we wrestled as a community of faith with this church? Have we wrestled to be faithful to who God has called us? Are we wrestling to be something that we're not? And God is moving us and pushing us and molding us to be something, but we wrestle. I like what someone wrote when he said, until you wrestle with God, you will not know the depth of his love, the power of his hand, or the grace of his heart. And that's exactly what Jacob experienced the depth of God's love for him, the power of his hands, and the grace of his heart. My friends, I think we all wrestle with one thing or another, but God is gracious and merciful and kind and willing to intervene and come to our aid so that we can be better than what we are today and be prepared for what it is to come tomorrow. Frederick Buchner, in his infamous sermon called, sermon called The Magnificent Defeat, related to this same passage, this same story, writes the following. Power, success, and happiness, as the world knows them, are his to who will fight for them hard enough. But peace, love, and joy are only from God. And into that moment, Jacob had gotten what he wanted. Maybe he didn't want Lear, and he had his own family issues because Lear and Rachel were not, although they were sisters, they were not, they were at odds because Rachel was loved by Jacob. And Lear, Scripture says, struggled with the fact that Jacob did not love her. Painful story. He had cows and cattle, and he had sheep and goats. He had been successful, but he had yet found what really love and peace and joy in the presence of God is in his life. Frederick Buechner continues his quote saying, and God is the enemy with whom Jacob fought by the river. And of course, whom in one way or another we all of us fight, God. He calls God the beloved enemy. Wonderful expression. Our enemy because before giving us everything, he demands of us everything. Before giving us life, he demands our lives, ourselves, our wills, our treasure. End of quote. When Jacob ceases to struggle with God and surrenders to the defeat so that he can win, a blessing comes to him. Listen, he walks away with a new name. Walks away with a new walk. Might not be in his choice, but he does walk away. He walks away with a new experience. He walks away with a new awareness of himself and of God. For in the struggles, we can be transformed by God's grace and love and mercy. So I leave you with this question. Will you and I surrender, surrender it all? Will we give it all up to him? 
are we all in collectively and individually? Will we surrender so that God's blessings can come to us? Will you surrender for the win, the win of God's grace, love, and mercy? Amen. Lord, we surrender to you. Surrendering to you, we know the battles within and the battles outside are tough. Some of us battle with you, some of us battle with ourselves, and some of us battle with things that have come to us. We struggle. Help us to surrender those challenges that we have and those ill feelings that we feel or the reluctance not to surrender all to you. Help us to come to you as we are and to let you work in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand? And join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. several announcements. Uh, tomorrow the church office will be closed in honor of President's Day. The 144 envelope fundraiser in the North X is still going on. We have 46 remaining envelopes to help raise funds for the youth program. Today at 5.30 we have the luau. Today at 5.30 is the luau. I hope all of you will come and join and have some fun. 
The fellowship ladies will have their monthly luncheon on Wednesday the 28th. See more for more information in the bulletin. Next Sunday, February 25th, the last Sunday of February, we're bringing back Boy Scout Sunday, and the boys will be part of the worship. They will prepare delicious pancake, and you'll hear more about the work of the Boy Scouts and the partnership with our church that's been going on for many, many years. I hope you go out, not with a limp, <laughs> but go out in courage and in the wrestling with God, God who wrestles with us because he loves us and he cares and wants the best for us. Now may the peace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.